Hello again and welcome to our review of the Cisco RV042 router. The Cisco RV series is the backbone of our cloud. Here you can see the one at my place sitting underneath the Cisco SG200 switch. It is a very interesting device and very elegant with a metal shell, ports on the rear and indicators on the front. It matches beautifully the SG200 switch and they look very nice in the living room. Also helped by the fact that both the router and the switch have their ports on the back. On the top you can see the Cisco logo painted on the aluminium and on the front you see 10 slash 100 4 port VPN router. There's a version G that supports gigabit Ethernet. On the rear you can see six fast Ethernet ports. The first four for internal devices, one for your ISP or connection to your modem, and another one that can be configured as a DMZ port or as a backup WAN link. So in case your main internet line goes off, you can switch to the second or use a load balancer for example. And also the VPN tunnels are supported in this configuration if you have fixed IPs for both interfaces. Here is a close-up of my setup. So all the ports of the Cisco are utilized of the router. Um, one is connected to my Apple TV, one is connected to the switch, one is connected to my server only for use for the virtual machines, and the other one is connected to a wireless access point. On the top, well, one port goes to the router, the second port goes to a second switch I have in another room across the house, two free ports, uh, then one port goes to my PlayStation, one goes to the NAS, the other one goes to the second interface of uh, the server where I run my VMs for the host connection, and the fourth one goes to um, I don't even remember now here a close-up of the top front view you can see the flashing LEDs and the text I mentioned before on the left side looking from the front you have a slot to connect a Kensington lock if you need it and on the right side, you have the power plug. Interesting, it's shipped with this L-shaped connector with a switch. This is probably because of your European regulations. And you can see the switch on the top actually has a power button and doesn't come with the L-shaped uh, connector. So your power adapter actually connects to this L-shaped plug that goes into the power socket and you don't need to disconnect the cable to switch the unit off. Here is how the power adapter looks like. It's the same model as the one that came with the switch and looks very similar to the one that connects my DSL modem. On the front we have the indicators. From the left to the right, firstly we have the system indicator. I've only seen this blinking when I'm booting up. The Diag LED blinks when you're doing a firmware upgrade and I haven't seen it blinking in any other occasion. Internet is flashing when you have no internet connection. It is off, of course, if there is no cable connected. It's up when the connection is up and it blinks if there is data going through. The DMZ slash internet works the same way as the internet indicator. DMZ mode lights up when you go to the interface and enable the DMZ mode for the second WAN interface. And here we have the four indicators of connection, link, I mean link, and activity for the four fast internet ports that are on the back. And this is the overview of my setup. 
So on the right side we have the router, the RV042, and on, the to on top of it the SG200 switch. Uh, on the middle we have a generation 8 HP microserver running FreeNAS and inside two 500 gig hard drives and one SSD. It's not done yet. When I'm done, I'm gonna have four two terabytes hard drives. And on the left side, you have uh, my older micro server. It runs Windows 2012 R2, encrypted with BitLocker. And on top of it, on the left side, my hard drive with personal files is encrypted using the standard Western Digital Encryption tool. And I hope the vulnerabilities are fixed by now. And on the right, it's a hard drive that runs backups, stores the backups for the operating system, and it's encrypted using BitLocker.